Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. We want to thank our newest Patreon. We want to say a huge thank you to Miss Allie. We appreciate your support. Glad, glad, I can't even talk today. Glad to have you aboard. Absolutely. Again, uh, you can join Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And if you pay it for a year in advance, it goes down to $10.80 and there are exclusive videos up there on a regular basis so this was yellowstone yesterday this is a geyser so it isn't a big uh super volcanic eruption thankfully uh, but this really did catch people by surprise and was kind of crazy uh this this is not typical this particular uh blast that we had and uh, this area of the park is closed right now. People realizing, wait a minute, wait a minute, this, this isn't supposed to be this big. No, that's that's really big, and that's a lot of pressure building underneath there. You gotta you gotta wonder, you know what, <laughs> what's going on underneath? Yeah, Biscuit Basin. You know, Yellowstone again, super volcano, perhaps the most super <laughs> famous super volcano uh, in in the world. When you get down to it. This is a crack. We talked about this before. We showed this video. This is again in the same area. Um, and, you know, it's it's right, right near uh, the big Yellowstone. I mean, if Yellowstone ever did go, which we, we don't see it going, we've never gotten from uh, the guides that it's going to go in our lifetime in a major way. Not that you couldn't have some sort of more minor eruptive events going on but you know again yellowstone that would just change everything in the blink of an eye it would it really would uh, um that's something it's like a giant gorilla that's you know sleeping peacefully you definitely want to keep an eye on that gorilla absolutely yeah like king kong it, it, yeah. this i thought was really curious because you know, here you go. This is there's the clip here from 2012, the movie 2012, the eruption at Yellowstone, when the Woody Harrelson character says, "This marks the last day of the United States of America." He actually turned 63 uh, yesterday, same day as the Yellowstone eruption. No, just a synchronicity. Nothing to see here, guys. Uh, yeah, I, that was one of my favorite characters. He was just so insane, and and some people have said that he reminded. People of me? Uh, well, surprise, surprise on that. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Oh, and, and by the way, there are birthdays today. Birthdays we're today. Gonna we're going to leave it at that. Anyway, this is unusual. Um, now, last night when I was looking, as we're looking at a week's period here, uh, 132 quakes in the map right here. Uh, but last night when I was looking at before some of these rolled off, you had two really large swarms, one mostly westward of Abilene. And then this one down here below Whites, New Mexico, uh, you know, this we see White City. We see swarms over here. Um, you will see swarms from time to time, smaller numbers, though. It was unusual to see like 32 and 33 uh, in these two spots, I, I hadn't noticed that before. I mean, I've seen um, one or the other, maybe a dozen, maybe, you know, single digits. But <clears throat> this has been really, really, uh, this is Oil City. This is, you know, well after well after well that you see going out here. So that absolutely can, you know, influence things big time. And I do think uh, that so much of um, Texas, for instance, has been uh, laid with landmines because of all the um, oil that we've taken out of the ground there. You know, there's another big swarm. We're, we're up to 442 quakes in a 24-hour period that USGS is showing. Uh, there's another big swarm going on in Hawaii again, too. As you can see here, 225 of those 442 quakes uh, in Hawaii. So it, it feels like we're building, you know, Joni Petrie, um, you know, we love her. We, we think she's very entertaining and insightful and some, some things she has gotten spot on. 
She is totally convinced we have big quakes coming the rest of this year. Um, I was thinking more towards the spring uh, and into the very early part of summer, um, but it does feel like things are being delayed and held off. But it does still feel like things are coming. It's just a matter of, of when. Mm-hmm. Well, the energy is building and building, and it's evident. You can see that with everything that's going on. Yeah, that's 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 the thing. We haven't had the big releases. We haven't had the big releases of energy. So you have hackers that stolen and leaked internal documents stolen from Lido's Holdings or Lido's Holdings. One of the largest IT service providers to the Pentagon, Homeland Security, NASA, and other government ag- agencies. Uh, there's been so many of those. And then the uh, here go the barricades up again around the White House this morning. Uh, tonight will be a little speech. We'll see what, um, you know, we'll see which clone or actor shows up portraying the late Joe Biden. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm only half laughing. <clears throat> And you know, yeah, we're going to see because if one goes down, they all go down and no one has a job anymore. Um, This is really curious. They've been keeping it under wraps pretty tight. And when you look at all the surveys, they're all saying, wow, look at Kamala go. She's doing so well. She's ahead here. She's ahead there. Really? You know, again. I'm so heartened by some of the comments that I see uh, when I read, like, people talking under various sources, you know, giving out these blurbs about the political situation. And I think for the first time, I'm truly seeing, not just in our circles, the CONS piracy theorists, uh, you know, channels, but in other places, people are saying, I don't believe it. I don't trust any of them. You know, I, I'm not going to trust a billionaire. I'm seeing that more than ever. I, I really do uh, feel that there is an awakening that's very, very significant at this point. It, it feels like people are are seeing through the illusion and they're starting to understand that they just want you to pick a side. As long as you pick a side, you're picking their agenda. So, you know, it came out, too, that one of the considerations there for for treasurer in uh, 45 and then if he did become 47, which the astrology is pointing towards him uh, becoming 47. If you follow Joni Petri, she also just got the birth time for J.D. Vance and his chart is so in sync with 45's chart. They're both magas. If you've never heard of of nakshatras, nakshatras, uh, I should give this to Cindy. Nakshatra is very, very telling when it comes to personality. Um, It has to do with the ascendant. uh, And J.D. Vance and Trump are the same. And in fact, if you looked at his chart and Trump's chart, you would think that, wait a minute, you know why they picked J.D. Vance? Because they listen to a Vedic astrologer. Seriously. It, it's true. It's true. I mean, it's um, something that if you can really learn how to dig deep into that art, which it is not easy, you can make some pretty amazing predictions. But the, the nakshatra, which I do look at when I do people's charts, the the rising is very important to me. And the moon, because the moon is the mind. We want to look at those two. It's the star rising in the east when you were born. And I honestly believe that these beings take up a teeny sliver of this sky. So it's like taking a zodiac sign and it's like cutting it into four slices. And and then you understand your little teeny tiny slice of the sky, which is way more detailed than a than a zodiac sign. So I really appreciate those nakshatras. They go a long way and I I believe that if you whatever nakshatra you're born under, you take on that essence of that being and you take on that carbon copy. So it's really important uh, to me to know that and that was part of Vedic astrology that really drew me in. I I enjoyed those nakshatras. I still do. 
Yeah, <clears throat> you know, I, I think maybe we should do a, a, a video on that. Maybe that would be a good one to go in depth. Let's just say it's in the stars. Yeah, actually, so much is in the stars that will blow your mind. And, and for those that only know their sun sign and Western astrology, you know, that's, that's nothing. You know, that is so missing the boat. Not saying Western astrology is missing the boat. If you just think it's your sun sign, that's just that's just the tiniest of of details. Uh, there's so much more in the chart, and even things like looking at past life, and you know, <laughs> you you could get clues as to how successful your past life was, and even you know what was that involving. It's amazing what's inside the stars in, in a Vedic astrology chart, and let's just say that it looks like they handpicked. Um, the best astrological match to go with 45 to ensure um, a certain outcome. Meanwhile, you have Ukrainian President Zelensky now saying, we have to end this war as soon as possible. <laughs> we have to end this war as soon as possible. Uh, you wanted just you know a lifeline of money uh, indefinitely. Now you want to end the war as soon as possible. Is it because of the awakening, perhaps? But then when you look at details uh, from RT here, here's the conditions. The conditions are <clears throat> a certain peace formula. This is Zelensky's demands first revealed back in November 22, uh, and they're still holding strong to that. So Russia withdrawal from all Ukrainian territories, even the ones that it claims it now owns, including Crimea and Donbass, repayment of reparations, war crimes trials for the Russian leadership, and Ukraine's membership in NATO. Uh, Moscow says it's delusional. So again, you know, we have to end this war, but it's on these conditions and, you know, against conditions that are just never going to happen. So, you know, what is it really, really saying there? This is wild. Um, this is one angry whale. Um, so what ticked this whale off? Again, there's a lot of military um, projects that go on. There's a lot of frequencies that are put out in the oceans, and then we'll see beachings of whales and dolphins. Whales and dolphins are very, very intelligent um, beings. And in some ways, they may be more advanced than humans spiritually. Oh, gosh, they are. They are. They understand uh, what this world is about. They carry ancient knowledge with them as they swim through the oceans. They're, you know, the singing, the singing that they do actually helps our earth. It heals our earth. And any any of you guys that are understanding sound healing, you would really get that. And, and then water is an amplifier. So if these whales are going through the ocean, singing and healing our ocean this is amplifying and and it's the frequency on earth is changing so if this frequency is changing it's going to amplify the healing and we are all able to dig in and really heal our hearts and our souls and make it to another another era another place absolutely um do you pick up anything on what triggered this one uh He's very sensitive toward thoughts. <laughs> Some he somebody made him angry, and he sensed it. So there's the, something that's going on there. He's very angry. He's fed up. Um, when it comes to humans, there's no respect. So I, you know, I almost feel like one of his buddies got hurt, and possibly because of this guy. This this whale is no dummy here. It's a new era that we're going in, and yeah, you know, we're going to be experiencing the world uh many of us from a totally different perspective and you know understand that we need to be acting in a symbiotic way with with the planet itself which this is not what this system does there was an airlines jet uh that crashed during takeoff this was over in nepal it, it killed 18 of the 19 the one person that survived was the pilot um it very uh, weird uh, event, but at the same time, we've seen so much going on with planes. Cindy was picking up that it, it was something that was happening with the pilot that was causing uh, the issue. Right. On this one, I, I was picking up, there was, there was definitely something going on with the pilot. 
I don't know if he had a panic attack. I mean, could it have been a panic attack because something happened on the plane and he couldn't control it? Uh, but because of his reaction, this is this is what we have. I, I really feel sorry for all the families and everyone involved. This is just so tragic. This is so sad. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, Larry Cook, he, he's somebody here on X that I've been following. Uh, his followers growing consistently uh, up to 78,000 followers. He's uh, very, very anti-ouchy, if you know what I mean. And so he, he's run into some health issues, uh, vascular in nature, and it's going through a little trials and tribulations. So just sending him positive energy, healing energy. Uh, this is a time of miracles. So, you know, your intent is very, very powerful. All of us, you know, looking and sending him energy l literally can boost him right back into balance and harmony. Uh, so, you know, again, as somebody that does our best to expose what's really going on in the world and see Larry and he, he does the same thing. He's, he's fighting hard to expose uh, the injustices that, from his point of view. Mm -hmm. He's doing his best and this thing has happened to him. So our hearts and our prayers are definitely with him to, to uh, make a comeback, figure out what's wrong and, and fix it. And then I just saw this, and, you know, this is like one of the subjects that I like to touch on from time to time because, you know, we've had so many encounters with very uh, uh, obvious spirit orbs during our times everywhere, everywhere. You know, we were catching them out in our yard. All we got to do is go out in the backyard and do mantras, and they come. It's just like when we do mantras and I have a bird feeder up right in front of the window, the birds come. So when we do the Vedic mantras, it's putting off such a, a positive frequency that it draws in uh, the, the birds and, and sometimes squirrels, et cetera, et cetera, but also disembodied beings, which for the most part, again, uh, many of you guys, I know uh, most all the regulars understand this. These spirit orbs are just simply people without bodies and most of the time we don't have bodies the time that we have a body is the uh is the lesser time that, as opposed to the time when we're not in a body and you can see the faces in these various orbs um we've done complete videos showing that before it's, it's all consciousness. Ultimately, we are consciousness having a temporary human experience. And it's so important to understand that because it takes the fear away of, of the transition <clears throat> of leaving the body. Because we most of us, we've done this before. We've done this before many, many times. Mm. You know, there is a, a time period when the, the soul starts to prepare the body and in some belief systems it's just said that you know as you age you simply get more and more into the mantras and the meditation and you give up more and more of the 3d things because by the time you leave uh you're prepared to just give up everything you definitely you can't take any of it with you um and, and it's the ability to separate from those 3d things and it does take time now on the other, on when you make it out of the body, there are beings there that help uh, re-engage you and help you understand what has happened because it can be very disorienting. Um, just sort of the same as being born. You're going from one world to another world. And depending on where your soul is and what your belief system is, that's going to have a lot to do with what and who comes to you to help you. Um you know, there's people that I work with that I, their loved ones have passed and they just say they want to check in on them. What, what do they want to do? And in sometimes in these cases, these loved ones have completely changed. Say they were just really miserable in the 3D. Well, when they're in their other world, they're building houses, even the way that they dress, their demeanor, their, um, their inner being has completely changed and they're happy now and they're doing what's right for them they're healing but a lot of that goes on a lot of healing after we leave the body for some time um 
it's it's just interesting to watch the differences between 3D and the other the other dimensions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as we've said many times, 3D and 4D are are two sides of the same coin, and it's really when you are looking at things and and looking up even higher, like a 5D perspective, that things really change and the persona will will change at that point um you, you know it's just fascinating to see the reality is uh, souls do transmigrate they go from one vehicle to another and you know while we we don't agree with the uh, uh fundamentalist concept of fallen angels being the source of all problems uh, there are angelic beings and they do make their appearances known at times and yeah you know, science can say, you know, it's just a sun dog. It's, it's just, you know, water vapor, you know, with the light refracting on it. Again, these, even us, we ultimately, we're all beings of light. Mm-hmm. We are. We're beings of light. We're just different than what we think. So everything is just opposite. And when the human body does go through pain, it does go through suffering, this is all in preparation to leave the bodies. Now our animals are the exact same way. They go through pain, they go through suffering, they leave the body and usually they stay around with their owners or they stay around with um, other loved ones. So this is definitely what you're looking at here. It's, it's a very significant being, very large, very powerful, you know, somebody's uh, angel showing itself for them that you know it could very well be the person taking the picture uh, it could be their it could be their angel and just saying hey i'm here and that happens very often when when uh, somebody is going through an awakening uh, with the energy work i hear it over and over and over and they do get pictures of their star family and they do have direct um, access to their star family you know sometimes maybe just for a moment but it's the most beautiful thing and it can bring you to tears because then you then you get to see the realness of it all all of that doubt that you had in the 3d like do we just blow out like a candle all of those questions they all melt away into tears of joy and and it's just so beautiful i can't say enough about it i could talk about it all day and the other thing that hits me too is this this may be kind of typical of the size of beings on tiamat you know of of the original uh tiamat from which earth comes from because earth does come from tiamat uh, remnants of tiamat so this you know a lot of those mountains that that we see that are attributed to being bodies of giants and and these things that roger over at mud fossil sees you know, you could see how, you know, this would be perhaps the size of a a etheric body of one of those beings. Right. And you got to keep in mind that these, these beings that are very, very large, they can cram themselves in a human body, but it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. I mean, this may be just the uh, higher ascended part of someone else in a human body but it is huge and it does look like it would be fitting of the size of tiamat <laughs> i love this one look at the look at the monkey oh bad hair day bad hair day um bad very bad hair day monkey's upset absolutely you know thanks so much guys for being part of this family it's it's an honor and a blessing and we're gonna keep doing our best to bring you guys a a wide variety of information you know news and then that which is hidden and then the brighter side of things which is even in the darkest of times this is still just a temporary human experience for learning and growth indeed it is source bless and namaste namaste